Now then, as we move into the final few days of this election campaign, we've been focusing on the key seats in Battleground 2010, places in the Anglia region where this election will be decided. Today, we're in Norwich, a city divided into two seats. The North has already had a by-election battle in the past year, but it's the South where the spotlight now falls. That's where one of the government's most seasoned politicians comes under threat, not least from the Green Party. Our correspondent, Malcolm Robertson, looks at the battle for control of Norwich. Norwich's bustling market. It takes centre stage in the city. A city where in recent years the colour, in a political sense, has been predominantly red. But now there's a shade of blue. But what price yellow? Or maybe it might even turn green. The Greens have targeted three seats they really want to win at the general election and Norwich South is one of them. Now in recent years they've made huge strides in terms of the amount of councillors they've got on the city council. But if they are to win this seat they're going to have to topple a redoubtable political opponent. Charles Clark, a former Education Secretary and Home Secretary, has been the MP here since 1997. What makes this seat so interesting is that the other candidates, Anthony Little from the Conservatives, Adrian Ramsey from the Greens and Simon Wright from the Liberal Democrats, all harbour realistic hopes of winning it. It seems a lot of people in Norwich can't make up their minds. That's certainly true on the city's market. Barry Butcher and Malcolm Snelling have each worked there for more than 50 years. They still don't know who they'll be voting for. Is it worthwhile voting at all, you know? Will you vote? I haven't made up my mind yet, you know. We just don't know what to do. Barry Butcher can be persuaded by whoever serves up what he considers the right policy on law and order. As far as I'm concerned, the government has just handed to the people by introducing more laws when actually more enforcement on the current laws is needed. You don't need new laws, you need enforcement and punishment. And that's what I feel most people, especially those that, that have to live in the city centre, uh, feel about crime. Chris Fisher is the political editor of the Eastern Daily Press newspaper. His view is that Chloe Smith will retain Norwich North, having won it from Labour at a by-election last year, although with boundary changes, it is a very different seat this year. And he believes that Charles Clark will hold on to Norwich South. The Liberal Democrats came second last time, the Tories third. They both um, fancy their chances of taking it uh, off Charles, but so do the Greens, who have had um, a whole string of successes in uh, council elections. But I think these other parties will get in the way of each other, and um, Charles will survive. Students account for 20% of votes in Norwich South. Getting them to the polling stations could be an important factor in the outcome. A recent poll commissioned by the University of East Anglia Students Union revealed Charles Clark to be a clear winner. And although the other parties questioned the validity of that poll, political analyst Lawrence Hardy believes the other parties have a lot of ground to make up. I think that the ability of the uh, supporters of the other parties to take a, a tactical view is not going to be absolute. If uh, virtually every Green Party supporter went to Lib Dem or every Lib Dem voter went to the Green Party, then there's just a chance it would be neck and neck. But um, I think that's unlikely. A week today we'll know the result. A week's a long time in politics. Still time enough for any colour in Norwich South to come to the fore. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News, Norwich. And here is the full list of candidates standing in Norwich South in the general election. There are seven in total. Polling day is next Thursday and you can vote between seven in the morning and ten at night. And here's the list for Norwich North. There are eight candidates there. And just a reminder that constituency boundaries have changed since the by-election last year. So some voters will now be included in a different seat. Police investigating a fatal fire at a house in Colchester have found a second body. Firefighters were called to the house on Land Lane early on Wednesday. The bodies recovered have yet to be identified, but are believed to be those of the occupants, Emily Carter and her son Francis. It's not yet known what caused the fire. The Fire Brigade's union in Essex is suspending industrial action while negotiators work on a deal to end their dispute with management. Firefighters have been taking industrial action over the last eight months in a dispute over frontline staffing levels. FBU members will suspend action for 21 days as talks continue. 
A leading academic from Norfolk claims wildlife documentary makers are breaching the rights of animals by invading their privacy. Dr Brett Mills believes the programmes are unethical for capturing animals on camera without their consent. Here's Natalie Gray. These extraordinary pictures are from Anglia Television's own wildlife series Survival, one of broadcasting's biggest exports. And it's exactly programmes like these that have ruffled the feathers of UEA academic Dr Brett Mills. He says animals are having their right to privacy breached. There are very definitely human forms of behaviour, like birth, like death and, and like mating, which we very definitely see as private. And maybe there's a question to be raised that some animals, depending on where they're doing it and how they're doing it, uh, maybe that kind of stuff should be thought of as private in the same way. But programme makers rubbish Dr Mills's claims. Well, I think the most polite thing I can say is that it's balmy. I mean, the very idea of it, I've spent 30 years avoiding being seen by the animals I'm filming, and the idea that I've got to walk around with a pile of consent forms to get the little paw prints before I start filming is just out of this world. Over there are Troy and Diana. They're jaguars, and they're the star attractions of Amazona Zoo here in Cromer, and they're obviously quite used to people watching them. Is their privacy being invaded? Well, yes, probably but they don't seem to mind. How are they going to be troubled by filming? Uh, th as I just said, looking at the animals, you know, your bird table in the garden, this is just the same sort of thing. It's voyeurism. It's certainly got people squawking. I mean talking. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Cromer. In football, Ipswich Town fans are facing the prospect of more high-profile departures from the club. Manager Roy Keane has confirmed that goalkeeper Richard Wright and defender David Wright won't be offered new contracts. He's also spoken to other senior players whose futures may lie away from Portman Road. It's been a difficult week because we've had to leave some good players go. But as I said, we've got players to come back from loan. I'm hoping to bring in four or five. And unfortunately, you can't keep everybody. And um, and. and we, you know the players were letting go. We wish them well because they've been, you know, they've been very good for the football club. Well, Ipswich complete their championship season on Sunday. That's at home to Sheffield United. Peterborough visit Plymouth. There are two games left for our clubs in League One. Champions Norwich visit Bristol Rovers. Colchester to face Huddersfield. While Southend host Stockport. And for horse racing fans, all eyes will be on Newmarket for the next two days as it stages the Guineas Festival, the first big event of the flat season.